Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is Tom. So we're going to do a really quick, um, just a, an early impressions, um, early impressions video here on the OpenSUSE with the Enlightenment desktop theme. So um, this is a, uh, a fascinating desktop to say the least. Uh, I'm not completely sure if I'm going to go ahead and do the entire one month on this, I, although I might. Um, I was able to resolve this morning the biggest issue that was driving me mad. Um, but there are certainly some, some other problems um, that I've encountered. Uh, would I recommend this for a new Linux user? Absolutely not. No, no, keep away. Back, stay back. Go to like Linux Mint or Ubuntu or or uh, something uh, something that's more more traditional or more standard. Um, this has given me a lot of issues already. It's like day three, no day two. I think day two, day two and a half. I finally got video codecs working today. I have installed I think every video codex known to man. Um, removed almost all of them to finally get things working. <laughs> <laughs> just to try and get something to go. Um, as far as uh, some of the early impressions on media, and I have not gotten a chance to stream a lot of media on this. I will do a lot more uh, over the course of this next week. I'm still kind of in setup mode with this computer here. I've installed some of the basic applications that I want to run, like Bluefish. I have Chrome and Chromium on here. Um, I'm running VLC. I've decided to use uh, Clementine as the default um, uh, music player. Uh, just as the one that, that comes built into the, the system. Um, if there is a video player, I'm not sure which one it was. Let's see. I know I installed Dragon Player. Um, I installed Kodi. VLC might have come pre-installed. I don't know. Um, I put Kodi on here because I've had good luck with Kodi on my other systems. Although VLC Player does, uh, does actually work on this system. Um, I had a problem with running VLC player on the uh, KDE system, mostly because the plug and play, um, the plug and play, uh, or UPnP, I should say, um, does not work with KDE, apparently. Uh, if you can get it to work, it, it's a bear, what I've heard. Now, one of the major negatives of this system is that I cannot find any way to access the network on this computer. Now, I know it exists, I know it sort of works, because I can log into my other computers and see this computer, but I just there's just nowhere I can see network computers from this computer. I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, um, what I ended up doing is I ran a, um, what I ended up doing, I, I adjusted the, um, the mounting early, you know, the, the bootloading mounting files to run my music and my video libraries from my NAS computer. And so all of those are mapped over here just like drives and it just automatically loads them up on uh, boot up of the computer. So that actually enabled me to find all of the files in VLC uh, just using the open file tab. Um, and uh, Basically, I could get in there and um, uh, view any of the files through any of the media, like any of the video or the audio files I happen to have on my, my NAS computer. Um, so I did find, though, that, uh, that I like the Clementine quite a bit better for, for that. So, you know, here we're kind of in my, uh, my Pink Floyd directory there. I can, you know, play something there. I'm not sure if you can hear it on the system or not. Um, one of the things that, that I don't care for is, let's see, I didn't do it at that time. Um, usually as I'm closing Clementine, it kind of stays open. And you can see it stays open because of the thing down at the bottom, uh, the little dot you, you can see on Simple Screen Recorder down here. Um, now, as I'm scrolling over this, this, I just want to highlight this. This is the most gorgeous desktop environment I've ever seen. This thing is just amazing looking. And uh, the problem is it's not very stable. Um, I have encountered a lot of problems where the system just has to, I get kind of like the, um, see Windows has the blue screen of death. I'm going to call it the white dialog box of death. Just a little white dialog box that says it's got an error. You push the button and it resets everything really quickly. Um, but <laughs> anything you had open is just done. 
Um, and I encountered those issues trying to change themes over. In fact, uh, this is the default theme. I have kept it themed, I themed this way. I just love it. It's just awesome. There is a more modern flat UI theme for those that, that want uh, a more modern design um, uh, utilizing like the flat panels. Um, there, we do have those options as well. Let's see if set the screen recorder still going. Okay. I wasn't sure. It's like my CPU just dropped. So I'm like, what's going on? Um, so uh, basically, the, um, uh, the files kind of stay open. The cool thing that we have here is, um, uh, cool thing that we have here is that we, um, uh, we have a cool presentation mode enabled, which the first time I was playing a video and the screensaver came on, it gave me a dialog box like, hey, do you want the screensaver to go on or do you want to go into presentation mode? I'm like, hey, presentation mode. That solves the entire problem with caffeine that I could not get running on my KDE system. But I don't have a way to turn it off. <laughs> I can't figure out where this thing is. And I can't find any you know, back system monitor. I can't find a system tray where I can load any of those up. In fact, this bar down here isn't even like a, a traditional bar. It's actually a dock. Um, and I just like the dock you know, full screen. So I, I, I took the painstaking time to get this thing configured to be a little bit more like this. Um, but I kind of got this working the, the way I like it. I have my main programs I want to use down here. Now, I do not have my Windows key mapped to my main window yet. Um, eventually, I will get that working. Um, but you can see here that uh, I can access everything through a, a pretty basic standard menu. And that's, this even looks out of place. Like, I'd love to see one of, the, one of the menus available in the KDE system in here because it really matches the cool UI. Uh, it's kind of like the, the UI is really awesome. And then you go over here and you get this menu that's back from like 10 years ago, uh, which is kind of goofy. Um, <clears throat> you can add various widgets to the desktop. I've actually added systems uh, settings widget up here in the desktop corner, which uh, because I'm still in here playing with things, I'm still getting stuff configured. Uh, I'd love to change the themes for you, but that resets everything, including destroying my, uh, my simple screen recorder. So I don't want to do that. Uh, but you can just come right into your settings and under your look, change your theme in here. You can also change the colors, the fonts. The borders, so if you don't like these boxes, you can do that. Um, so I guess they're handy for people that, that know every one of the system resource codes. Um, so, final icon, let's see that is. Okay. So there, there are a lot of neat things in the system. It, it kind of been a pain to get configured so far. Uh, for this week, I'm going to be running it mostly this week as a media computer. I'm going to be streaming YouTube videos, Yahoo View videos on it. I'll probably do a couple movies and, and just some, some basic uh, music just to, to get a feel for how well it works. Uh, so far, audio quality sounds just fine. Uh, recording quality, I don't have quite as good, so sorry for the bad recording quality, but um, the audio quality sounds good coming out, um, out of the screen. Um, and I did notice that, at least for the short periods of time I've been testing, I've not seen the stuttering that I see in, in uh, KDE. Uh, with the video. However, it did take me forever to get the video codexes working here. Um, so there's anything else initially. Um, as far as initial stuff, uh, I'm still getting the CPU error when I log the computer in. Basically, that is a command that's trying to run without user super user privileges. So I just have to find that command in the configuration files and, and uh, I'll give it super user privileges as it runs. Uh, there's actually a, exact instructions on how to fix that online. I just haven't bothered to do that yet. Um, and otherwise, uh, you know, like I said, this is not a desktop environment for the beginning user. Um, this is extremely advanced. Uh, it's definitely difficult. I have spent way more time in the terminal than <laughs> than I would like to do for for a switch to Linux video where I'm kind of encouraging people to explore Linux. So for those watching this, thinking about trying out Linux, um, if you are, do not, are not familiar with Linux, don't check out Linux with this particular distro and this particular uh, desktop environment. This is more advanced. I think I will like it once I have it completely up and running. Uh, but if you do want something that's, that runs sweet out of the box, Linux Mint Cinnamon, um, uh, eh, Ubuntu's been getting a little hate lately. Um, even for me a little bit. I got to do a video with some of the things Ubuntu has been driving me crazy, but 
Um, if you're used to a Mac and you want to try Linux, you want to try um, any any good distro that has um, uh, GNOME 3. Uh, probably not Fedora though, because media does not work well out of the box with Fedora either. So like a um, a Linux Mint uh, and Ubuntu maybe running GNOME desktop, uh, GNOME 3. Uh, if you are used to the Windows platform like I was prior to switching to Linux, um, a Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition is just like, I mean, it took me a whole 10 minutes to get that configured just like I want my Windows systems. Um, I'll, I'll point out one other disadvantage that I've seen on, on this system. Now we do have the workspace switcher which I can access by holding the alt control and the arrow keys to switch workplaces. Um, but there is, seems to be, I don't know if it's a hot corner or what it is, but if I throw the mouse over here, it's kind of random. It'll switch my desktops and I don't know exactly what's, it's not like a hot corner, but it's like if I do, I don't know what it is. There we go. I finally got it back. So it's like, it seems to be some weird random thing and I, I can't quite get it to work right. But anyway, um, those are some early impressions. Um, stay tuned in a couple of days. I'll do, I'll do another impression here to, you know, once I get a few more of the bugs figured out, uh, we'll go on from there. So this has been Tom and you've been watching Switched to Linux.